This podcast contains material that is intended for mature audiences and may not be suitable for all listeners. Enjoy. Careful, you idiot. I said across her nose, not up it. Sorry, sir. Doing my best. Who made that man a gunner? I did, sir. He's my cousin. Who is he? He's an asshole, sir. I know that. What's his name? That is his name, sir. Asshole. Major asshole. And his cousin? He's an asshole, too, sir. Gunner's made first class Philip asshole. How many assholes we got on this ship, anyhow? Yo! I knew it. I'm surrounded by assholes. Keep firing, assholes! Yes, I was wrong about you. You're not such an asshole after all. No, you were right. I'm just your kind of asshole. I don't want to get on the bandwagon. I'll burn that wagon down and join the band. Traveling troubadours terrorizing street corners just to try to get some supper in our hands. Now I waited all my life to get this off my chest screen buddy murder until someone understands That it ain't about the money, the drugs, or the women I make this noise just because I can And we'll all join in to that original scene Welcome to another edition of Old Man Strength, a podcast of the Tailgate Society, brought to you by Deadeye Barbecue Sauce, the best damn barbecue sauce in the known universe. You can find them on the web at deadeyebbq.com. Go ahead and find us at thetailgatesociety.com. I am Tim Johnson, as always, joined by Chris Shipley. Chris, how are you doing tonight? Sounds like I'm doing better than you. Yeah, I (laughs) am a little bit under the weather my voice is uh just extra sexy tonight it's really we're gonna go ahead and, and consider it it's gonna be rough for me to concentrate on <laughs> control myself uh no I, you know uh, just imagine you're talking to nick nolte i think is the way we're gonna go on this <laughs> <one>. <laughs> um but uh chris how have you been been pretty well been pretty well uh eh little i don't know it's been kind of a a long few weeks i think uh <clears throat> days are running together i told stacy the other day i said uh she asked me what was wrong i said you know i don't i don't know i just i'm kind of blah right now i get up in the morning i go to the gym in the morning uh get the boys off i see you for maybe five or ten minutes before you leave for work and i'm home by myself in the basement working all day long no interaction with anybody. And then, you know, you come home, we make dinner and we maybe sit on the couch for an hour or so. And then it's time to go to bed and do it all over again. I said, this winter is really taking a toll on me. I nothing to do. You can't go anywhere during the week. I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know what day it is. I don't know. It's mentally exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been rough. I think extra so with this winter because we've had you know we had two weeks there where it was too cold where you didn't even want to leave the house you certainly weren't going to get outside or there were was you know a large snowstorm or whatever so i feel like we've been a little bit more housebound anyway for winter but with you know the pandemic you're not going into the office things like that it's just gotten to be uh 10 times worse i you know i now that the weather's nice, it's a shame that, I, that I've got this cold and I don't really want to get out and about with this because it would be nice to just to go out on a walk and just get away for a little bit. Yeah, I find myself, even <clears throat> I get an hour for lunch, I find myself, oh, you know what, I'm going to run to the store or run to this errand or, or whatever, just to, to have some sort of sense of normalcy. I never realized until this last few weeks how much I really just miss the commute back and forth to work. Just the, you know, that 25 minutes of, you know, having some coffee in the car and listening to the radio and and just the traffic and everything around you and, you know, going to a desk every day. I, you know, I had a nice 
corner area that was surrounded by windows in downtown Des Moines. I could, you know, look at the skyline. I could look at the people outside, could have conversations with the people I work with. And now it's like, you know, I'm in this basement in a, in, in a corner with no window and no light. And it's just, it's, it's really taken a toll on me lately. And it didn't help that Stacy went to Omaha last weekend. And uh, so it was just me and the boys. Uh, my daughter went to the Okaboji for the weekend and all my other friends had went out of town or did other things. And I'm like, Stacy was like, what are you going to do this weekend? Uh, probably the same thing I did every night this week. I'm going <laughs> to sit here on the couch and eat dinner and take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, let's, let's hope that the weather gets awfully nice, awfully quick. So you can get even more motivated to get out there and, you know, maybe have some garage beers with the neighbors. Right. Or some golf. That's what I'm really jonesing for. Yeah. Just play some golf. I have I have some friends that live in Southern California and I swear to God, never work. One of them is a is uh he owns a couple of radiology clinics, so he do, he doesn't ever work. <laughs> um <laughs> and so he's got the two of them are constantly sending pictures of, from the golf course in, in Southern California. And I'm just like, Oh man, you guys are assholes. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. The, the trend of people that, that take pictures of their feet when they're on vacation or, or whatever like that. I ain't got time for that. They don't, don't rub it in my face. I last year, <laughs> last year, um, there's a new person that works at our company and he's uh, fairly high up. And uh, nice enough guy. I didn't know him very well. I just became friends with him on Facebook. And um, I don't know, it was the middle of the pandemic. And he was like, you know, even though we didn't go to go to Costa Rica and we didn't get to go to this place and we didn't get to go to this place. And I like, he named off like these seven exotic places that he was going to go to. You know, we still got to fit a nice family vacation in South Padre. And I just wanted to go, dude, read the fucking room right now. <laughs> <laughs> right do, do, like, do you work with ted cruz is that what, what, what's going on <laughs> <laughs> man can you believe that uh, like, you know what i the the true hero in that whole thing is uh, is that those people that released his group checks right even his, his, even his neighbors don't like him even even his neighbors don't like him <laughs> i've always said that Rand paul and ted cruz's neighbors are the real heroes in life <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I, I I'm ready for for things to get better and get out there. Um, I'm tired of dealing with these assholes, which I think is a great segue into what we wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, that it kind of prompted when you talked about Ted Cruz. It kind of prompted me. You know, he gave his little spiel on on a podcast the other day. How he was he was upset that his neighbors had released his his um text messages and you know and the bottom line is is you know you don't have to be assholes mm-hmm. which I found ironic that he that guy's the biggest a hole <laughs> yeah of all people of all people but so it reminded me I had stumbled upon this I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people have, have heard of the Reddit stream of am I the asshole so I thought it would be kind of fun to read some of these and just read them cold to you and get your initial reaction and just let's figure it out if these people are assholes or not. And maybe it'll lead into some other stories or whatever. Um, probably Melvin stories. Cause you know, if you asked his best friends, they would tell you he's an, he was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, well good. Sure. good. No, I, I, I'm, I'm down for this. I like this. Those things are hysterical to read. I, I will say that it does seem like a good 60 to 90% of the time, the person asking if they're the asshole, they are the asshole. Um, and some of these, it can't be real. Like they, I, right. like you, they can't be an honest question, but we're going to find out. Yep. Yeah. All right. No, I'm all right. I'm, I'm down. Let's, let's, let's hear it. Shoot that first one at me. Okay. So this one is, am I the asshole for not being okay? That my boyfriend blaming my cat for a dump that his kid took. <laughs> okay I, i'm gonna need i'm i'm hooked already but i'm gonna need more <laughs> okay 
I have to say, when I first read it, I had to read the headline two or three times before I figured out exactly what they were talking about. Okay, so, yes, I'm an unconfrontational weenie, but I was mentally unprepared for this. My boyfriend's kid is six and plays with my Legos when they visit. I keep them in a big bin with a lid that latches on. When they were over yesterday, I opened the bin and saw a very big turd in there. I shouted, oh my God, and the boyfriend came running to see what it was, and I just pointed, expecting him to be embarrassed and apologize, you know, be the one to clean it up or something. He just laughed and asked if my cat had done that before, and I said, what do you mean my cat? (laughs) (laughs) He lectured me about how my cat totally took a dump five times its normal size, and I didn't say anything for a while because it felt surreal as hell. (laughs) <laughs> when I asked how the cat latched the box back, he shouted, the kids must have done it without looking. He refused to ask Andy and threatened to leave. I had the world's biggest cat turd to clean, so I didn't say anything, and now he's upset that I let them leave. My friend says that he was probably embarrassed, and it was a dick move not to let him save face. <laughs> 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 She also said, I should expect this if I'm dating a man with a child. I feel like it was a dick move to make me clean it up. I'm the youngest son with no nephew, so this was literally the first time I've had to handle human poop. Really? Also, I put the Legos in a mesh produce bag and (laughs) ran through the dishwasher (laughs) after they were clean, but is that enough? Like I said, I still don't want to touch them. Should I expect to clean up human poop if I'm dating a man with a kid and pretend it didn't happen, or am I the asshole? Uh, wow! So there, there is. There's a, a lot to unpack. There's now. a lot to unpack there. Um, you know, on the one hand, I have a a, a five year old. I've dealt with enough poop for for a lifetime as it is. Um, but my, I gotta say, my first instinct was not just throw those things out. <laughs> they're they're Legos. You, you you can go buy more, but yeah, that that is disturbing. Um, kids definitely do like hiding poop. I uh, see. I think it's the cat. You do think it's the cat? I do. I mean it. It would seem it would seem more logical that, that the cat pooped in there and the kids didn't realize it and when it was time to pick up the legos they just let they just threw them in the bin and shut them and shut the latch i mean it's cer- it's certainly plausible it's certainly plausible like, we don't know we, there's no pictures so we have no idea right. what the size of this is um I, I would think most people could could distinguish between cat poop and kid poop um, yes um I don't know. I I think I think even for even if it was the cat, I think there needs to be a conversation about this, not just a what are you talking about argument. Um 6 years old. Uh yeah, 6 year olds do weird things though, man. Yeah. They, they <sighs> it, it really from like age 3 to like age I don't know how old your oldest. They do weird things. Um, Like I I could definitely see a six-year-old doing that, but I could also just see a six-year-old seeing that the cat pooped in there. I would think though that a six-year-old would probably have said something like, ew, the the cat pooped in here. Yeah. Right. That's true. Yeah. I think six six six-year-olds like talking about poop. Not, not their own. They're not going to be proud. They're going to be embarrassed and try to hide their own. But a I'm just old... trying to picture the whole squat over the Lego. I mean, the kid knows that he's playing with those Legos, but that's that's what's got me a little baffled. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the real question is, though, is this is this person? First of all, I I got halfway through here and it's done on me. It must be a gay couple. Not that yeah. that matters. No. But when he said. Something like I, I'm the youngest I, son. I'm the youngest son. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of threw me for a loop in the middle of that. <laughs> well, the the question that I had, first of all, then, so I don't know, do they have ages on on these adults? Yeah, it does not. No. Okay. Because if I'm 
you know, let's say, okay, so if the boyfriend has, has a six-year-old son, they're in their late 20s. Why does, yep. why does the person without a kid have a, a bin full of Legos at his place in the first place? Yeah, that's that's a little weird too, right? Right. And I mean, not that that adults can't play with Legos, but yeah. But does anybody just buy like random Legos and put shit together? I mean, most of the time, I'm buying kits that I know what I'm putting together. Right. Right. And I'm not buying uh, to me an entire big thing of Legos that don't have any plan. That seems like a bad idea to me. I, I mean, I, I can tell you that that's what's in my daughter's room right now. I, the other day, she wanted to build what was it? A crocodile. And she wanted to make it like exactly to spec in, in the, the booklet, but all the pieces were mixed together. And it's like all of her Legos, all of my Legos from when I was a kid. And I had to find like these tiny little, not even quarter of an inch little green pieces that I was just digging through and digging through. And like someone needs to invent like some sort of Lego sieve like you're panning for gold or you can just shake the Legos back and forth and they've got different <laughs> sizes and they help you whittle it down to the smallest ones. Um, that would have been very helpful. Uh, so like, I get that, but that when you have your Legos organized like that, yeah, that's not for a adult Lego play, which sounds like a very weird thing. Now that I say that, I don't mean like, <laughs> like adult themed Lego. Play. That's probably a thing. I don't, I don't I, know. I'm sure it is. I, I don't, I don't want to, delve too deep into that but um but yeah no when when adults are putting them together like you said it's part of a kit and it's it has a plan and it's not just this hodgepodge of a big rubber made tote full of 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 lego pieces so that yeah that's that's a little weird um i'm also not a big fan of cats um, I'm with you. I'm, <laughs> it, and, yeah. I know, and I know that they also sometimes act like six year olds and poop in weird places. <laughs> so it is it is perfectly plausible that it could have been. You know, there's a lot of information we don't have here. Um, in the kids' defense, I've been in a situation before where I've had to use the bathroom so bad mm. that I have used personal items to take care of that (laughs) and felt that it was okay to wash it later okay so okay we were i was at work one day and we had a we had a major snowstorm like within like two hours we had ice and everything and i i work downtown and i work on just south of des moines so at the time i had a uh, like a charger so it was a fair it was a real wheel car you know you can't get around in those very well and then yeah. especially if you're on some sort of a ramp or a you know an uphill you got to keep going you can't stop there you're you're dead you're done so there's a ton of traffic i'm driving home and there's this little road that snakes through this park that connects to another part of a different road that was pretty much all flat And there were stoplights. If I didn't take that road and I would have went straight, there were stoplights that were halfway up a hill on a bridge. And I knew that if I got stuck at that stoplight, I was, I would, I would not be able to get through. So I pulled off and I snaked through this road that was on the side of this park, me and about a hundred other cars until I realized that I was halfway down there. And the other end of this, this road was only a single car out every time. Right. It wasn't like a stoplight where, it would let 10 cars go at once. So sure enough, I got stuck on this single lane road for three hours. I had an iPad in my car. I watched a movie. I watched a movie (laughs) collateral in my car, snaking five miles an hour. And you were going so slow that you weren't going anywhere. Yeah. Fast enough that if you had to get out of the car for any reason, you couldn't because the minute you got out of the car, you would have to scoot up another two inches or whatever. You know what I mean? Yep. And I had to pee bad. Like you ever had to pee so bad that the walls of your, you know, bladder was, Oh yeah. It it was bad. Where, where like when you finally get to go, it's the greatest feeling in the history of the world. And I'm like, I, the only thing I got in my car is my Iowa state 
Tervis thermal cup. Like, you know, it's one of those big 30 ounce cups. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I can see where this is going. So, I peed in the cup. I had to go. I mean, I couldn't get out of the car. What was I going to do? I couldn't pee my pants. I peed in the cup. Yeah. Uh, as I'm going five miles an hour down the road. So <laughs> I roll the window down. I pour the cup out. I get home. It's like four hours later. I get, I get home. I bring the cup in the house. I tell Stacy the story. She's staring at the cup. Uh, I put it in the dishwasher. I washed it. <laughs> the next morning she opened the dishwasher and she's like, you're not keeping that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that cup cost me $25. You can't keep that cup. Why? It went through the steaming hot dishwasher. It's fine. If you drink out of that cup, you and I are going to have serious problems. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, so I, I tossed it. I got rid of the cup. But I could see where the guy would want to rewash those Legos. I mean, I could see that. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Well, so, Chris, if I had that cup. No, so here's the thing. I've, I've had, you know, in high school, I, I worked on, on a farm, on a dairy farm. So I'm used to all types of animal effluent and whatever. Um, I used to be married to a vet, so the number of times I would she would come home from work and I would ask her what was on her clothes and she couldn't identify if it was <laughs> blood or poop. Uh, the number of times there was horse semen in our freezer that I'm like, can we get you a separate? <laughs> can we get you a separate fridge or freezer for the garage? Uh, so, in theory, I'm more than comfortable with all of these things. And I think you're right. It's been washed. It's been cleaned. But I think it's just the the idea of it. And I could see for for Stacy, like every time she saw you drinking out of that thing, and then she thought of kissing you, it would probably make her want to throw up a little bit. So you were right to get rid of it. I think I think that was the right call. I. I don't know if I would have thrown it out. Maybe, maybe this makes me an asshole. I think I probably would have like donated that. I think that would have ended up at the at the, at the thrift store. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's better or worse. Uh, you know, because in my mind, it's still a good cup, and I don't want to throw away a cup. But right. I would also want to get rid of it for for those reasons. So, you know, it's kind of like the whole George Costanza taking a book into the bathroom at the at the bookstore, just... <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, in the <laughs> can't because it's been flagged, right? This has been flagged, it's been in the bathroom, right? Well, I mean, and it also makes me think, you know, if you ever buy anything at a thrift store, good lord, you have no idea what its history is. Um, what anything yeah. that you've ever purchased at, at Goodwill or, or well, you know, I, any, I any secondhand here's a reason why my wife is a lifesaver. I never, I used to buy clothes at the thrift store when I was losing a bunch of weight or whatever. I would go buy, um, I never, I just assumed that they washed those there. So when I got them, I didn't wash them before I wore them the first time. <laughs> She's she about keep up glued. <laughs> You're not washing that first. No, they wash it there at the thrift store. No, you got you to gotta wash that. I mean, it's a wonder, dude, that she married me. It really <laughs> is a miracle that she married me. Yeah, no. As um, fucked up as I was. <laughs> it is. It, no, they. you would think that they would wash them. And for the most part, those things kind of look it. I think a lot of people have enough decency to donate washed clothes. Yes. I would hope so. But I mean, I even think about that... Uh, of uh, clothes I buy at an apartment store, right? You know, yeah. JC Penny isn't putting unwashed clothes out there, but also I don't know who all has touched that and worn that and whatever, like tried it on, done, you know, whatever, whatever. What were they wearing? Had they, who knows? Um, not to, to get all classist and you, a smelly person, wore these clothes, but man. I know what it's like to just be in the same car with someone who had smoked before and still smell smoke on you. Uh, mm. You know, 
afterwards, not even having the act of smoke going on. So I can certainly imagine uh, some other things in clothes. So I always, no matter where I buy the clothes, I always wash it first before. Before I, maybe the one caveat is if it's something that's actually in like a sealed bag, you know, right. like like undershirts or dress shirts. Although yeah. dress shirts, you usually have to wash just to get all the wrinkles out from how they're 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 folded. But you know, occasionally some things will come packaged, and then yeah, you know, you you're free socks. You can go ahead socks, and right. wear socks, underwear, washing them. Yeah, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> If you're buying your underwear at the thrift store, Chris, then uh, Stacy and I no, know there's a good. there's <laughs> there's a few boundaries I won't cross. That would be one of them. Yeah, that I would don't. be one of them. Yeah, I. Ugh, that's a, that's a whole other thing. Um, so yeah, I guess getting back to our original, our original topic of who the asshole is in this one. Uh, I. I, I just I think it's him. I think it's the guy that's that owns the Legos. I just think that there was probably a better way to handle that than to automatically just accuse the kid. Yeah. Um I think it's I think it's both. I'm gonna call them both assholes. I think neither of them handled this one well. Uh, well, I, I let's look at I look at it from a single father perspective. If yeah. if that dude is bitching if that dude isn't prepared for occasional little poop sometimes in a bad spot, then he's not ready to be in a relationship with somebody with a kid. Oh, no, for sure. I think that's absolutely right. Fair. So I that's, think that's absolutely fair. I think I, as a, as a single father with a young child, I think I also kind of have an obligation to realize that my kid is going to do some things that are less than pleasant and be open to yes. and have that dialogue of, of, you know, not cause it seemed like that, that fight escalated rather quickly. Um, I think there needs to be probably, you know, he seemed to not have any, give it any second thought that it was the, the cat that it clearly wasn't his kid. Right. Although when he says he refused to ask Andy and threatened to leave, that makes me want to flip my vote to the guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I, if somebody came to me and said, "Hey, somebody pooped in here," I would, I probably would, knowing my kids going, "Hey, did you fucking shit in that box over there?" Like, well, you need to tell me. Well, you don't even, you don't even have to ask that directly. I, you know, with a oh, six-year-old, you know, <laughs> that's true. But like with a six-year-old, you can just say, "Hey, did you notice there was poop in here?" And that opens the door wide for them to be like, "Yeah, the cat did it." <laughs> Or for them to be like, no, and then you can read on their face and say, right. because they're terrible liars, that they yeah. did it, right? So I think there's another way that they could have resolved that. So for him to not even approach his son about that, um, yeah, I think I think that's a, uh, that's a problem, too. That's why I think they're both kind of the asshole in this one. I would go with that. All right. Well, well good. We solved that one. Let's, let's we solved that one. one. All right. <sighs> This one's a little complicated. Not that they're all real simple, but uh, am I the asshole for wanting to start a relationship with my newly found daughter? Now, when I first, first read that line, I had the same reaction you do, Tim. I was <laughs> like, I don't have any idea where this has come from, but yeah, you're an asshole and, and kind of sick. Yeah. Now, let me read the story because it's not quite what you think. <laughs> it's a very although it is crazy it's, it's again a very this is where i wanted to headline though. right right and th again this is where i think these th some of this shit can't be true like it's got to yeah. be made up back when i was back when i was 16 and i he's 51 now i met a mexican girl named ann in my school who was new and immigrated to the states she was absolutely gorgeous and had a very distinctive look we dated for five years and I had always considered her the love of my life. We went to the same college together and always talked about getting married. Her family wasn't very keen on a white kid like me dating her. One day she asked me to meet at a local park and tells me that she has to skip town. This is where I think this story is made up, right? I asked why. And when I would see her again, she acted like she couldn't talk long and just said she didn't know, but she was doing this for my safety. And that was the last time I ever saw her. 
I eventually moved, but I always thought of her. When Facebook became a thing, I tried to find her, but never did. Eventually, I got married to my wife, who was 50, when we were in our early 40s. She had already had two kids from previous marriages, who were both preteens at the time. I provided for them, but were never, but they were never warm to me. I don't really begrudge them, but I never felt appreciated with everything I sacrificed to provide them. They are in their early 20s now. Fast forward to six months ago, a new girl, Beth, started at our office, and when I saw her, I was shocked. She was a splitting image of Anne. When I got the chance to talk to her privately, I asked her if her mom's, what her mom's name was. She was honestly didn't know because she was adopted, but she had been hunting for her biological parents. This thing is like a twist of turns. Right. She only had one photo to reference. I asked if I could see it. She said she would bring it the next day. I, I mean, if you don't know who your real mom is, but you have a photo of her, this is where I'm feeling like this is total bullshit. Right, right. I didn't want to say anything. I did, If I didn't, it wasn't 100% sure, and she was jealous type. I'm sorry. Let's back up. I asked if I could see it. She said she would bring it the next day. I kept it from my current wife. I didn't want anything. I didn't want her to be jealous, and I never liked, and she had never liked hearing about Anne before. The next day, Beth brought the photo, and it was Anne. I told her my story. We came to a realization that she was old enough to potentially be my daughter. We planned to get a paternity test that week. I was very hesitant to tell my wife. Well, it turns out she's my daughter, and I and we were both overjoyed to have found one another, and she asked if we could start building a relationship. Uh, see. My wife doesn't want me to be in contact with a girl who isn't more of your child as much as our kids are to you. She feels that by building this relationship, I will see her kids as less of mine. I got mad and said that her kids are her kids and I'd be happy and I've been happy providing for them, but I am not their father. I'm their stepdad and sometimes I don't even feel like they, they think that she is not forbidding me from a relationship, but I'm ready to die on this hill. First of all, I, this story is total horseshit. There's no way this is true. No way. So, this is right up there with the penthouse forums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought this would happen to me. Um, so here's what I, I will say that I can absolutely believe. So I have a friend who very recently, within the last couple of years, found out, well, their dad found out that he had not one, but two kids that he didn't know about. I, the first one, uh, had come up like, apparently he, he got a girl pregnant before he went off to the war and no one bothered to, to, to tell him. And then he came back and things were different and he didn't know. And then another one happened like shortly after the war or something like that, but he didn't, the woman moved away or whatever. And so my friend, and his siblings have an, as an adult within the last couple years have welcomed into their lives these half siblings that they, that they didn't know about so that type of shit certainly happens yes uh, now the whole they just happen to be starting at my work thing <laughs> that's where it gets to be <laughs> right. way too far from although although i crazy story so when i was married to my first wife she worked at um she worked at this at the iowa child support recovery uh call center and she there was a girl that worked there that started there and tracy was training her and they would get to be talking and i'm trying to remember how they put it together but the girl Tracy, well, first of all, Tracy would talk to anybody, right? And and I, and I used to joke, like, she came to campus one time with me when we were early married, and I was going to school up there. And she ran into, like, four people she knew before I did. Like, she knows everybody. It's crazy. I used to joke, you should be in missing persons, because you fucking know everybody. So, she's talking to this girl, and they're talking, and this girl's telling her that, you know, she just moved, recently moved back to Des Moines, and she, uh, she uh, is adopted and so on and so on. And, and Tracy had always had came home a couple of times. She goes, she kind of looks like my friend, Michelle. So they get to talking and this one girl knows who her real dad is. Anyways, turns out this girl is the sister of Tracy's good friend, Michelle. And Tracy figures it out. 
So she calls, she goes home, she calls Michelle. She's like, I think this lady that works with me is like your hat is your half sister that you don't know about. And sure enough, they got together and it turns out they were sisters. So <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's, cr- it's crazy that, that stuff like that happens, right. but it's crazy. not implausible, yeah. but yes. all of this put together, <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. Well, okay. So let's, let's pretend like it's not bullshit. Okay. Because because we're saying that it is certainly plausible that this has happened. Um and in that case, uh no, his wife is absolutely the asshole in this one. Absolutely. Absolutely the asshole. How are you going to deny uh anyone their opportunity to connect with their child? It especially under the bullshit idea of, oh, well, if you're gonna connect with them, you're not gonna love my your stepkids. Um, type of thing. Like, if there's one thing I've learned in my life is that when new relationships come about, like, love isn't pie. There's plenty to go around, right? It's not about pieces and who gets more and who gets less. Um, you can open someone, open up your heart to bring someone into your life, and not, not that mean that you have to push people out. It's not a boat. Like everyone can do that. So the idea of, hey, if you have this relationship with your newly found daughter, you're going to ignore my kids. I'm sorry, that's a weak excuse. Really what it comes down to, to me, is that that woman is jealous. And I'm sorry you're jealous, but guess what? I had a life before you. You know, I, 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 think, I think that's something that, that has to be fair. I, I 100% agree. And, and I can relate to that. In that my marriage with Stacy, when I when I met Stacy, the boys were five, the girls were thirteen and nine. I mean, they uh, we've always been considered a family. Um, it may not I, on the outside, people may not understand it, but I have just as much love for the boys as I do Taylor and Caitlin, mm-hmm. um, and she does them. Uh, to the point where I've never asked the boys to call me Dan. Mm-hmm. They don't call me Dan. They call me Chris. Mm-hmm. But for as long as I can remember, the girls have always called Stacy mom. Mm-hmm. Because, and, and in the beginning, when that started to happen, Stacy was like, I don't know. Not that I don't want them to call me that, but I don't ever want to upset Tracy. And I don't, and I was like, listen, we have to get away from that. If the girls feel close enough to you that they love you so much that they are comfortable calling you mom. That's not something I want to discourage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To your point, there's enough love to go around. And, and she said, and, and the other part of it is you have to, you have to make sure that you're not feeling, um, I don't know what the word is, but she said to me, well, how would you feel if the girls ever called Tracy's, boyfriend dad Mm -hmm. and i said to be honest with you it wouldn't bother me because i'm i'm confident in my relationship with my girls to know that they're that they don't have any other dad but me you know so you're you're a stronger you're a stronger man than i am i well but that's because (laughs) i know yeah but that's because i know that guy's not a better father than i am Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. that's that's and i don't mean that towards anybody else i'm just saying uh, it would now if Caitlin came to me and said, I'm going to get married and I want Tim to walk me down the aisle with you, I would probably have a problem with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but if she felt compelled enough to call him dad, it's not going to bother me any because I know who her dad is and mm-hmm. she knows who her dad is. Mm-hmm. And there has never been any question. The reason that Tracy gets so upset because the girls call her mom, call Stacy mom is because of her own insecurities. Sure. And that's, that's what this lady's problem is, right? She's so insecure in her, in her relationship with her husband that another daughter threatens that. Yeah. You know, uh, I dated a few people before I met Stacy after the girls and it was written notice that my girls were just as important to me as anybody else in my, in, in my life. So 
nobody's taking a second fill to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it, it's, it's not an easy space to be in by any means. Um, you know, I've, I've fully acknowledged that, that my daughter has a relationship with her mom's boyfriend and that she loves him and thinks he's great and that's fine. I, you know, I don't need to have anything to do with that. I'm not going to say anything um, ill of him. Uh, I don't know him enough. Um, but it is, it is a weird spot. I, I will acknowledge that it is a weird spot. I just can't imagine telling your spouse when they find out they have a kid, no, you can't see them. Especially if you are a parent. It would have been one thing to say, you know, if his wife never had kids, to say, you know, to think that she was supposed to be his one focus and the most important thing in the world to him. But she knows what it's like to be a parent. And he now has this new feeling and this, there's this connection that you feel that you can't even imagine. Um, I don't care if you found that out the day that the kid was born or you found that out years later, there's a whole other kind of connection there. And I can't, I just can't imagine denying someone the ability to reestablish that connection or establish that connection in the first place. Yeah, that would be the, I, I think that would probably be the end of it for me. Mm. Um, I mean, I would at least want the opportunity to, to, to get to know that person. I mean, yep. and, and, and have a relationship. And I, I don't, I've never been able to wrap my head around people that don't want to have a relationship with their kids. That's, uh, that's always been um, weird to me. And I can remember going through the divorce and uh, <clears throat> we went to mediation and one of the things that my ex-wife wanted was uh on the days that i didn't have the girls she wanted them to go to a daycare and then for me to pay for that and i was like why the fuck would i pay for a daycare when they have a home they can come to every day after school mm -hmm. said i work from home I, i'm off work at 2 30 every day they're done at school at three why would i why would my kids go to some other place when they can come to their other home and stay with their dad for two or three hours until you pick them up. Why would I do that? Yeah. You know, and I fought for 50, 50 and the judge was like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you do that? I, I, so the concept for me of people that didn't want to be with their kids and didn't want, now that doesn't say that I wouldn't want to break, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I mean, that that's, you know, after a day or so of the girls being gone, I would start to miss him and wish they were home. Yep. Um, just like I'm sure she did them, but uh, <clears throat> to not have an active, it's hard enough now for me not to see Caitlin all the time. Mm -hmm. And she's 21 years old. You know, she calls me every day. If I don't hear from her, or, or, or at least a text message of some sort to have some kind of contact with her. Yeah, I just no, don't get it. No, I yeah I. I don't understand it either. Um, yeah, it's it's weird uh, that, but I, I know I know people who have been fathers and have had a very kind of estranged on again off again relationship with their kids. So I know it happens. Uh, it always drives me up the wall when I and I meet those people or talk to those people or see, you know, how desperately uh, that kid wants to have a relationship with their dad. You know, it's one of those things that I've talked about, you know, frankly, with my ex-wife of, of when we continue to work out the calendar on, on sharing uh, that it's a good thing that I want to see my kid and keep on reminding her right. of, of this because it is something that becomes uh, a challenge. I, I, especially because, you know, kids aren't possessions. And so when people start treating them like possessions, that becomes a problem. Um, but they are, they're a part of you and you are a part of them and you need to make sure that you're, that, that, that relationship, uh, you know, I, cause that's the other thing is it's his wife. Isn't just the asshole, uh, for not allowing him to have that relationship. She's the asshole, asshole for not allowing that, that 
woman that just found her, her father from developing a relationship with her father. So she's, she's, yeah. be, she's being an asshole to two different people here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure that young girl has wondered who her father was just as much as her mother. Yes. Yeah. So definitely the ex wife or the wife, soon to be ex wife, probably. <laughs> I would imagine. I'm guessing she got kicked to the curb, yeah. is the asshole. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you feel about the C word? Because this one's got the C word. <laughs> uh, uh, Which, by the way, my dad would drop all the time, and he had no qualms about dropping that. That. Yeah, I I get the sense that that your dad, uh, you know, you say read the room. Uh, either wasn't reading the room or did not give a shit to read the room. He did not give a shit to, <laughs> to read the room. <laughs> Okay, uh, my my mom and my wife hate each other. Am I the asshole for telling my wife that it's her fault that my mom called her the c word? <laughs> I spent a lot of time feeling like I had to pick my wife before I realized that they are equally at fault, and I should not have taken anyone's side in this argument. My mom babysat my kids the other night. So that we could have a date night. When we got home, my mom was asleep and my wife freaked out about how irresponsible that was. But a couple of important things. Number one, the kids were also asleep and it was almost 11 o'clock at night. And two, my stepdad was there and was awake. Three, she was just resting her head on his lap. So probably not even in a deep sleep. My wife screamed at my mom and called her a bitch. My mom said my wife was acting crazy and then said, oh, my God, you are such a cunt. (laughs) I'm already on the mom's side. (laughs) My wife freaked out because the word triggers her and told them to get out. I thanked my mom for babysitting and hugged her, so we left on good terms. But my wife said that I should have defended her. I said she overreacted, didn't thank my mom. And if you call someone a bitch, you might just get called a name you don't like in return. My wife then called my mother-in-law in in the morning and my mother-in-law lectured me about how my mom, it must be, and my wife lectured me about how my mom is irresponsible and the kids could have died, (laughs) which I think is crazy dramatic. My wife and I sleep every night. And if one of the kids needs us, we just wake up. My wife said that I should call my mom and lay down the boundaries about how she can speak to her. But I said, nope, it's her fault for you getting called for calling her a bitch. So am I the asshole? Oh, boy. Boy. There's an awful lot of wives that are kind of bitchy. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and so that's one thing to point out with all of these is we're definitely only getting one side of the story. Right. Uh, Right. Who knows what the other? Because I've certainly been on the the other side of a story where I'm like, "Wow, that is not how I remember that happening at all." So, you know, but if if we give the, you know, that the story as told is true and accurate, so let's back this up. Uh, I think I need to hear that again. Okay. <laughs> there's a, there a lot of kind of back. And there's forth. a lot. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> or a synopsis maybe if, you, if my mom babysat my kids the other night so that we could have a date night when we got home my mom was asleep and my mom and my wife freaked out about how irresponsible that was even though the kids were asleep my stepdad was awake and my mom was just resting her head on her lap my wife screamed at my mom and called her a bitch my mom then said that my wife was acting crazy and then said oh my god you are such a cunt my wife freaked out because the word triggers her and told them to get out. Uh, I, yeah. So I think I'm siding with the, the mom on this one. hundred uh, percent. That word is definitely triggering <laughs> for sure. I, I get that. Um, I can't, I can't imagine a relationship where anybody talks to their in-law whether it's their daughter-in-law or their mother-in-law that way yeah that is that is that is direct 
I, I, I've had heated, I, I've had a couple heated conversations with my ex-wife's father when he was alive and we were married, but nothing to the point where uh, we used the, uh, language like that. Yeah. I, you know, I'm trying to think if I, if I can even, I think the closest maybe that came is that uh, one time my uh, my ex-wife's cousin uh, was drunk and claimed I had said something like months before when he was drunk at that time too that I didn't say because he was drunk and he misheard something. And then he had been har- harboring it for several months and then he got drunk and it all came out. And my now ex-wife I. Uh, tried to defend me by saying I'm sure Tim didn't mean it and I got mad at her because I'm like I, it's not that I said it and didn't mean it it's that I didn't even say it and she's like well you know how, how how he gets we just need to like I'm like no don't treat him with kid gloves he's not a kid he's an adult you're married to me not him right just say to him no Tim didn't say it unless you've got any proof that Tim said it shut up go to bed like yeah. that's how it should be, and right. she and she seemed very concerned. This this later became a theme that I found that she was more concerned with defending her family than she was defending me, or even just, you know, even though she agreed I didn't say it when she talked to me, she wouldn't ever tell anyone in her family I didn't say it. Right, and so that became came an issue. So I do get, I guess, where the wife said, "Hey, you should be looking out for me." You know, I do get it. I do get a maybe a sense that this husband probably defends his parents a little bit more than he he maybe you know maybe should. I think there's probably an element of that in here. Uh, but he, yeah, he's right. You call someone a bitch, you've you've opened it up. The that that floor is is open, and and, and you know. How does she know that the word bitch isn't triggering to her right. mother in law, right? It well, could be just it could be just as triggering. I to be a hundred percent honest, there's gotta be some history here that she's gotta know that that's that her mom that her stepmother is probably or her mother in law is probably uh not gonna take that, right? This right. can't be their first rodeo. This isn't their first fight. No way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially and I'm guessing the mom has probably thought she's a cunt for several years. It is probably held it in check for a while yeah yeah that would be my guess now i will say that i had um my mom uh when i was married to tracy we our house was in chaos all the time right like i I mean my ex-wife was not very domesticated as far as wanting to keep a clean house or whatever not for any female listeners, I'm not saying that's your job. I'm just saying she that just was not in her, her wheelhouse, right? Mm-hmm. And I was 400 and some pounds all the time. It was hard for me to do anything like that. So we lived in a house that wasn't exactly pristine and clean. I mean, it wasn't dirty and it wasn't, it just was lived in all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we always had laundry. We always had, uh, you know clothes on the floor or whatever um and every once in a while i would come home and my house would be completely clean my mom would come over and just clean our house and i remember one time and i would always call my mom and thank her so that mom thank you i really appreciate that and i one time i asked my wife i said you know you never you never like call my mom and thank her like she comes over here all the time and cleans our house or whatever and helps with the girls or whatever you never thank her well, I didn't call her to come over here and help us. That was her response one night. And I was like, you realize that like if mom didn't come over here, what your fucking life would be like, like mm-hmm. you could show just a little bit of gratitude. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think that she was so jealous of mom. And on the flip side, my mom was constantly, I wouldn't say trying to mother, but she knew that the girls needed a better mom. So she would constantly 
come over and do and, and play the mom role with the girls. Um, which I don't know that I could have survived without that. Sure. After I got divorced and was on my own, and then after I met Stacy, I didn't need that as much. And I think mom, uh, that was hard for mom to process. Mm-hmm. But she was grateful that she had that the girls finally had a, a mom that you know stepped up and, and took care of her or whatever, and took care of the girls or whatever. But I could see where there's tension there, right? Yeah. But for this lady to to say she shouldn't be sleeping. Bitch, you go to sleep every fucking night. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like there's some... Like, what, do you stay up all night watching your kids? Yeah, it, it seems like there's some other issue at play here that that this wasn't the real... This wasn't the real issue. This isn't the, really the thing the wife was mad at. She was looking for an excuse to start a fight. Uh, yes. Right? There's definitely right. There's definitely a whole lot more that we don't know about what that relationship is, is like. So yeah, I don't I don't think the husband is the asshole for saying that it's that she brought it on herself because she did bring it on herself. You know, again, they probably all could have handled that better. I can't I can't imagine my wife calling my mom the c or a, a, a bitch, and then my mom <laughs> calling my wife the c word, and then being like, "Oh, I my mom could." I I can't, but then I can't imagine be like. I love you, mom, and giving her a hug and then taking the kid, you know, like that, my that mom would have been like a very weird thing. My mom would have dropped her. <laughs> <laughs> my mom would have dropped her. That was the one, that was the one person you did not fuck with in my house was my mom. Yeah. Uh, what I got to ask though. So apparently the C word is a trigger word for women. Is there a trigger word for men? I don't think there is, right? There's not a word out there that would trigger you so much. Well, I take that back. I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think there's just so much toxic masculinity and we're, we're constantly uh, calling each other names and, you know, you know, when men get into a fight, they call each other pussies and a little bitch and yeah. all, like all of these things, right? That um Pussy is probably the one for me. Yeah. That and, and that, I, that would set me off. And it and it has before. I was in a well, I'm doing this charity thing right now for the knights and raising money for college scholarships. And I was in a meeting one time with a guy with a whole group of people and he he wanted to change some of the parameters or whatever. And all I said to him was, is uh, cause he was going to be slightly in charge of it the, the next year. And I was like, listen, you are in charge next year and you're welcome to do whatever you want. But if you make those changes and I probably won't participate, that was all I said. And the guy in front of like 10 other people said, well, you're a fucking pussy and got up and walked out. And I was like, Oh no. You're not dropping that on me and then walking out, dude. You're f- no fucking way. So, like, that's probably a trigger word for me. I would yeah. snap it. Yeah, I mean, that one's probably the closest. I still don't know that it carries the weight of the C word, but at the same time, men get into fights over the most trivial bullshits in general. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many times someone's manhood, like, you know, there's a, I've seen a bar fight break out over nothing. Right. Yeah. Nothing because the, all of the kind of the fragile ego that goes along with so much of that anyway. So and the I don't testosterone know, and right, the alcohol. Right. And the- so, so I don't know that there needs to be, I don't know that there needs to be any specific trigger word when men are just trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we got that one. Um, I, how many more of these you think you want to cover tonight? Uh, oh, let me see if I can find a good one here. Okay. Well, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and take a break? We're going to grab a word from our sponsor. I desperately need to get some more hot tea uh, so that my voice continues to sound as sexy as it does. We'll tease it because uh, we'll come back and I'll tell a famous asshole Melvin story. He's got he's, he's got all kinds of them. Oh, that's perfect. I'll, I'll drop the story that everybody's been wanting because it makes it, it truly does define the word asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, perfect. <laughs> I look forward to it. All right. Well, we will be back after a word from our sponsor. Back when I started Deadeye, I knew I wanted to innovate the barbecue game. Since day one, we've offered a premium barbecue product unlike anything else on the market. Great Aunt Irene had something special tucked away on a recipe card in her cupboard, and there was no way we weren't going to do something about it. So we decided to take it one step further, introducing Deadeye Superfood Barbecue Sauce. We've got five new flavors, graviola, acerola, pink guava, acai, and dragon fruit. They're the first of its kind, and they're packed with flavor. Find it at your local grocer today or at DeadeyeBBQ.com. Welcome back. Once again, this is Old Man Strength, a podcast of the Tailgate Society. Please visit us on the web at thetailgatesociety.com for all sorts of great content. Uh, articles on sports, music, pop culture, politics, you name it, we got it. We've got some great podcasts as well. I'm not even going to name them all because we've got a growing list, but please go ahead and find those on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Pods, or whatever it's called. iHeart. iHeart. Yeah, all of those, wherever fine podcasts are shared, I guess. But please go ahead, download, like, rate, subscribe all of that goodness we are talking through the reddit forum of am i the asshole and talking through situations uh where maybe even we've been the asshole in the past uh when we when we left off chris i uh, was looking for another good one to go through so chris what have you got for me well I- i've got two choices i'll read them to you We'll decide. We'll let you pick. I'll give you the headlines you pick. Okay. The first one is, is am I the asshole for getting mad when my dad insulted me when I went and bought my girlfriend tampons? That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or am I the asshole for refusing to get my pregnant wife fruit snacks and demanding that she do more chores? Oh boy. <laughs> Um, I think let's do that second one. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think that's that seems more, uh, <laughs> more red hot and more. Although it reminds me of the time that I, when I was working, uh, you know, I work in, in the department with all women, and one of the girls was pregnant, and uh, she sat across from me, and every day I would just come up with stuff like. Your poor husband. Has he gained any sympathy weight? You know, that's really rough on a guy when they gain sympathy weight. <laughs> so I would just get her all. I would just get, and of course, she always knew I was teasing, but I would always just get her all riled up. And and I was like, you know, you guys, and I being the only guy, I'm like, you, you guys don't know. I mean, you guys are pregnant, but do you have any idea what men go through on that stuff? Like, that's rough stuff, man. And I, and I, I was like, and I found this top 10 list of things that men go through during pregnancy. And by step num- by number four or five, they were all ready to choke me to death. It was so great. Yeah, it's it's kind of a miracle that you have not been murdered by, I know. by your teammates for sure. It's so funny. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Lay it on. Am me. I the asshole for refusing to get my pregnant wife fruit snacks? All right. My wife who's 27 and I am 29, is 24 weeks pregnant, and so far it's been a fairly easy pregnancy, according to her and her doctor. I have done my best to be a good husband. I work full-time, started doing all the chores, cooking, cleaning, pet care, and of course, try to do my best to accommodate her cravings. She's been taking it easy and spends most of her day relaxing. She says she's never felt better. Being completely honest, though, I'm starting to get a little burnt out. I love my wife and want her to be comfortable while pregnant, but working full time is very draining. I recently had two separate conversations asking if she'd be willing to do maybe an 80-20 chore split instead, but both times she got offended. She says that it would stress her out and possibly harm the baby, which scared me. I don't want anything to happen to our baby, so of course I didn't push it. However, yesterday morning at 2 a.m., my wife woke up and asked me if I could run to the store for fruit snacks. She was craving them badly. 
I have made many late night runs, but this week has just been so stressful. I worked overtime the entire weekend. I told her I was sorry, but I really needed to rest. I was just exhausted. She didn't like that answer. First, she tried to beg more, but then I kept saying no. She then started crying and telling me what a shit husband I was. <laughs> she also said she's scared to see me as a father if this is how selfish oh, I'm going to be. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? All right. I snapped at her. I told her I've been taking care of shit all the time for the past six months. She's been sitting on her phone every day and hasn't had to lift a finger. Then I said I was done doing 100% of the chores and we need more of an even split because I'm losing hair from this stress. I will admit I had a tone and was obviously irritated. This caused her to cry even more and then she kicked me to the couch. This has caused a huge argument between us. She was pissed at me the entire day and locked me out of the bedroom tonight. My mother-in-law has texted me to call me an asshole. They both said the stress <laughs> I'm putting on my wife will hurt the baby. So now I feel super guilty. I need perspective. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a landmine. I was going to say, this is a big trap. Um, wow. Uh, who? Uh. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say not the asshole. Okay. Okay. I, the dude has a right to get some sleep. Yes. I get two in the morning. You can't. You can't wait till tomorrow morning for some fruit snacks. Like I'm not. I'm not buying that. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm gonna agree. He's. He's not the asshole for not getting your fruit snacks. I uh, I think he's probably still an asshole in a couple of situations here <laughs> that that he needs to to be clear on the fruit snacks thing. Not the asshole, right? I agree, and I'm sure that it is physically taxing on him to be doing all of the chores. Um, but I want to be like, dude, you signed up for this, right? You signed up for this. Uh, what do you think is it's doing to her body? You're worried about losing hair because you're you're doing all of the chores. Do you have any clue what is going on to her body? And oh, by the way, I uh, want to nip this in the bud before I, before I say the wrong thing because I'm going to say this poorly. Um, but uh, women's hormones during pregnancy are all out of whack. Yes. Uh, so you need to understand they might get what seems to you to be unreasonably, irrationally emotional, overly emotional, um, you know, calling him an asshole, calling him names. That's all part and parcel of, of being married to someone while they're pregnant. That That is... You know, and not all women are like that. I don't know the situation. There is certainly a chance where maybe she's milking some of this. Uh, the whole guilt trip of you're going to harm the baby. Yeah, uh, that seems a little extreme. Right. Like that seems that, a little extreme. Right. Like you're you're taking advantage of his naivete here a little bit. Right. Um, and I can, I think that he's, this is clearly something that's been brewing because he brings up the whole she sits there all day long on her phone. Yeah. <laughs> like right? that that's clearly a shot of that's been pissing him off for like a few weeks now. Right. And it, you know, and it's certainly one thing when your doctor says take it easy, you know, be right. on bed rest, those types of things. Yeah. But I, I but I mean the millennia ago women were still plowing 40 acres, you know, yeah. 7 months pregnant, right? So it's not like women have to just sit and do nothing when they are pregnant. So maybe there's a bit where he's feel, he's feeling like he's being taken advantage of, and maybe she could be, uh, you know, making him feel unduly the whole calling them, you know, the mother-in-law and getting her involved. Getting in this a text thing. that you're an asshole. Holy smokes. You know, that, that should be a red flag that maybe you should get out right now. The, there's that, that feels a little bit a bridge too far. Yeah. All of that said, dude, you signed up for this. 
her body is going through things that you can't even imagine. And oh boy, let me tell you about the day of her body is going to go through things that you cannot possibly imagine. If you get a little stressed out. Oh, also, if you are stressed out during the pregnancy, do you know what it's like to have a one month old, a two month old, a three month old? Yeah, no kidding. This this is this is warm up. This is spring training, dude. Yeah, <laughs> right. This is spring training. I think she's exhausted now. <sighs> Wait till she goes all day breastfeeding and everything else. And yeah, all of the nutrients are sucked out of her right. body and all right. No one is sleeping. Neither of you guys are sleeping. Um, so no, not the asshole for not getting the fruit snacks. Like, right. I will say I did once drive to four different Hardee's to get an ice cream cone for Tracy one time because she wanted specifically <laughs> Hardee's ice cream. I don't know what the difference was. She just that was that's the only one that I can remember. I mean, I yeah, I don't I don't know what the difference is, but I also know sometimes you get a craving for like sometimes I get a craving for fountain Dr. Pepper. Yeah. It's just different than getting it out of a can or a bottle. Yep. Right. So I get like nuanced craving and I, I was lucky. Um, my, my daughter's mom never really had weird cravings. It was usually just stuff we already had around the house anyway. Uh, she was a very strong willed woman who worked well late into her pregnancy. You know, like she was still on call when she was pregnant. So she was already leaving to go look at horses Right. Two in the morning. So I I got lucky that I didn't have to go do those things. Uh, so maybe I don't quite understand the stress that he's been under. But again, this is not even the bigs, son. Just wait until that kid is born. It's going to be a whole nother, whole nother ball game. Uh, so you're going to need to find a way to apologize and agree to be the asshole and get used to sleeping on the couch (laughs) a couple more times. Uh, There's no way, there's no reason that you can't both be the asshole and still come out being a good husband in this. Agreed. Right. Sometimes you just have to accept what is uh, an acceptable level of asshole. Listen, I, it's not so much that as it is. I, I, I do this a lot in my marriage now in that Stacy and I will have a conversation or a discussion about something and I will typically default to what she feels she needs. Now, maybe that's not right, but to me, it's most of the time, it's not a hill that I'm, that I like the color of the house that we painted the kitchen. Right. Yeah. I don't really have, a hard like opinion about it. Yep. So she may have five different shades of blue. Yep. And I'll be like, those are all fine. You pick one because <laughs> it's not right now. If it was, you know, canary yellow, I would say no. Yep. But you know, the bottom line is, is whatever right now, I don't like the color that we have now. So whatever you choose is going to be an improvement for me. I will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. you on the other hand i know if you don't pick exactly what you want you will it will drive you crazy for the next two years so yep that's when i would step away and go you just make you decide what you want because it's fine with me yep that's that's kind of how i tackle a lot of that stuff so in instances like this i would be like i know i probably wouldn't go get fruit snacks at two o'clock in the morning i would that would be a hard no for me yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> I, I think so, you know, your, your, your scenario of the picking out paint colors, cause I've, I've lived that thing, um, do, can get, get dicey. It can get questionable. Cause one, uh, you know, you run the risk of being accused that you don't care enough about this thing. Right. right? And that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I don't care as much as you do. Right. And, yeah, right. And, and so I think, I think that is, that's always kind of a, a dangerous thing. Or if you just make an offhand comment later of, Oh man, 
this blue shows more stains than I thought it would. Uh, which is who you just keep to yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 a few times I have not kept that to myself <laughs> because then it's a well, you had the opportunity to say something like, well, I wouldn't have made the right choice at the time either. It's right. just look, we, we were both wrong. It's fine, but yeah, you're right. That's that's when Tim should just shut up and but, he doesn't always do that. But, but Stacy will analyze it, and, and it's not a criticism when I say she will analyze it. She will like, well, if I take this blue, then this particular thing here won't work with this. But if I take this blue, and then yeah, and I'm over here going right now it's green and i'd be perfectly fine if it was blue so yeah. let's you just pick one yeah like whatever because i know it's not gonna bother me yep i'll i every time now i walk in the living room i like the way the living room looks it looks nicer it looks fresher it looks cleaner i we we've improved our house doesn't bother me yeah yeah it, a, any any household change especially when like you don't you don't know you're taking a you know knocking a, a hole in the wall or anything that's a little bit bigger that you don't know rearranging furniture sometimes even when there's one of those changes and you don't know so you're taking a risk uh maybe sometimes i'm gonna just it's it's a cop out but sometimes I, you know my default has always been what do you want because i want you to be happy right I, you know there's this yeah. whole I, I don't like this kind of, uh, I don't know, people, there was this whole uh, happy wife, ha happy life type of, of mantra, which I think is good and noble, but I do think that, you know, both, you should be a partnership, you know, both of you should have agency, both of you should be able to have in, uh, input and feedback and have things right. that matter to you. Uh, you. Now you need to pick and choose what matters to you. And, and Stacy has said that many times when I will say, uh, you know, I, I, I will typically default to what you want. She will say, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to have an opinion. I want to know. It, I, I'm not telling you what we should do. I want to have a discussion about it because there might be things that I don't think of. Yeah. Right. Right. So it is nice to have an equal partner in that and be able to have a discussion and feel like you're not arguing. You're not stepping on somebody's toes. That's a big deal for, for us that we do. Yeah, but sometimes you really just don't have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> There's just sometimes I'm just like I really don't care. Yeah, I, I right. I yeah, I don't care. I'm sorry. I'm not giving this enough thought. I don't even know what to think about it. Right, uh, right. Um, yeah, and there are times where I think she might be focusing on something a little. More. I rarely do I do I step in and 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 say absolutely one hundred percent. I don't want to do that. Right, but like two years ago when we went to go look for a new bed um, because after I had surgery, I had to have a bed that kind of tilts up so I can sleep sitting up. And she wanted to keep the, the dresser and the armor and stuff that, that we have. But in order to have those dual adjustable beds, we had to have uh, a king size bed. So we're looking and she's looking at these ones that have storage underneath and so on. And cause she wants more storage and, we couldn't we couldn't decide on anything and then at, the, at some point then we decided to go with this other set and then um but it wasn't going to match the furniture that we had so then we were looking at a whole new bedroom set i had found a, just a headboard in a in a in a in a foot board that had two storage drawers underneath of it and they were not as they weren't high priced but they were two drawers and she didn't care for the quality of the drawers so next thing I know, we're looking at whole bedroom sets. So I'm like, I'm sitting at home and I'm like, now we're staring at like four grand in the face, right? Yeah. When we were just going to buy a, a, a bed. And I said, I finally, I was like, I, I just got to ask. I said, I, when we went today, we looked at, you don't want to buy this one bedroom set because you think it might be cheaply made. but you're now willing to spend $4,000 on a bedroom set when we have perfectly good stuff sitting upstairs when all we would ever put in those drawers underneath there are probably blankets and pillows. Yeah. You know, like I, uh, we can do it if you want, but um, is there a reason why we aren't looking back at this other thing? I mean, it's not like we're going to put clothes in there yeah. that are going to weigh it down and, and it's storage for blankets and, 
extra pillows, which is what you wanted to put in there. And she's like, well, yeah. So then we decided we're going to go back and get it. So we go back the next day and then we found a completely different set that was like cloth. And then we were able to keep our own. So, I mean, it all worked out, but that was one of the few times where I was like, somehow we went from, you know, $1,200 to four grand in like one day. Like I'm not, I, I don't yeah. need new furniture. I like the furniture that we have upstairs. Yeah. And she did too, yeah. you know, but that's a good example of we, we stepped back and had a conversation about it and discussed it and, and nobody's feelings got hurt or whatever else. So, yeah. Um, no, yeah, no, I, no. Feelings. I, th- I think, I think as far as this guy goes with the pregnant wife, um, I'm not saying run out and go get the fruit snacks, but I'm saying this too will pass. Yeah. Go sleep on the couch and live to fight another fight. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a lot going on here. So yeah, you're not the asshole for getting for you're not the asshole for not getting the fruit snacks, but just accept that you're going to be considered an asshole for a while throughout this because there's some bigger things going on and that's taking care of your kid. And that now what you need to put on your big boy pants is just shutting up and doing these things uh, because it's about to get worse. <laughs> right, right. So, just fruit snacks are the least of your problems, dude. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know when, when that kid has wakes up crying at three in the morning with an explosive diaper, and after you get that kid all cleaned up and you put on a new diaper, and then immediately they explode all over that one as well, and you're about to to uh, pick up the whole diaper bag and throw it out into the backyard because you're so frustrated that you just got done cleaning up this thing i mean right my daughter projectile pooped on our brand like we had just decorated her her room with brand new curtains and she projectile pooped on the curtains (laughs) you sure it wasn't the cat (laughs) (laughs) but i mean there's gonna there's gonna have to be a lot of stuff that you let roll off Uh, well yeah letting things roll off you know who wasn't good about that that would be Melvin. Yeah, Melvin I, wasn't. Melvin I, wasn't very good about letting things letting things go either. Yeah, I was going to ask what what Melvin would tell this young man. Well, I mean, that lady would have been going to get her own fruit snacks. I can tell you that. <laughs> I I can't imagine that my dad was very. I mean, it was a different time then, right? Yeah. But my dad had zero patience for shit like that, anyways. Which leads me to the number one asshole story of the of the night we'll we'll end on this tidbit yeah perfect perfect so this would be uh probably one of the best stories uh uh, of melvin and and to set the scene so we had our store um and dad used to to get used computers and, and pcs and printers and things like that and if you remember they had the old Oki Dada um, dot matrix printers mm-hmm. with the perforated paper, you know, and they you'd pin, print invoices. They were a workhorse, right? And they were at the time. This was back in ninety three, ninety four. At the time, they were fairly expensive, sure. and he had gotten, I think he'd gotten like thirty or forty of these printers, and uh, they sold for over two hundred dollars, brand new. And these were all used from an office building. And he had put an ad in the paper for $89. I mean, that was 120 some dollars cheaper than what you could buy a new one for. It was a good buy. He put an ad in the paper. So he's gone. I'm working the store. In walks this guy. And he's, do you remember the very first type of portable computers that looked like an old suitcase? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? And I'll, I'll tweet out a picture of it for any of these young people that are listening that don't have any fucking idea what I'm talking about. It looked like a suitcase. Weighed it a ton. looked like a suitcase. It weighed like a ton, right? He come walking in the store with this. And I'm, I'm 23 years old. I'm, you know, I'm all about customer service and making the, you know, doing whatever I can to make the customer happy. And the guy says, I, I saw your ad about these printers. I'm just wondering if I could if I could maybe hook one up to this computer to see if it works before I buy it. Sure, let's let's do that. You know, so we're in the middle of the showroom. We had these tables in the middle of the showroom. 
so he lugs this thing open, opens it up and plugs it in. And I bring the printer over and he starts turning it on. And pretty soon it doesn't want to boot. Mm -hmm. This computer doesn't start to load. And next thing I know, he pulls out a screwdriver. He starts pulling shit apart on the middle of the, in the middle of the table, in the middle of the showroom, he starts pulling this old computer apart and in walks my dad. And I'm instantly like, I've already realized I've went down too far with this fucking guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and dad looks at him and he looks at me and he walks it and he goes and sits in his office. And my dad's office had a big glass opening so he could see out onto the showroom floor. So this guy turns his computer on, still won't come on. Next thing you know, Tim, he's got half the fucking computer unassembled on this table. And I'm <laughs> deep shit now, right? I'm We're deep in. The guy's been here an hour. And dad walks out and he comes up to me and he goes, what the fuck is that guy doing? I was like, he, he came in to ask to buy a printer. He wanted to hook it up. I thought he was just going to hook it up. I don't know. It's not working. And dad goes, he better fucking get out of here. And I was like, I, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And fuck. And he turns around and walks back into his office. Right. Guy still f- fucking around with it. Can't get it. To, can't get it to turn on. Can't get it to turn on. Finally, Dad walks out there. He goes, "Hey, are you gonna buy that fucking printer or not?" <laughs> and, and the guy goes, "Well, I really wanted to see if it worked with my computer, but I can't." Dad goes, "I'll tell you what. Now you can't buy the fucking printer. So get that fucking thing and pack it up and get the fuck out of my <laughs> store." And I was like, "What are you doing?" And the guy says, excuse me? He goes, you fucking heard me. That printer's $89. You know what that sells for brand new? You should get on your knees and kiss my ass to buy that fucking printer. Now. <laughs> he goes, I, I'm not running a fucking sweatshop around here where you can just work on all your fucking shit all day long in the middle of my fucking store. So pack that shit up and get the fuck out of my store. And he stormed off. And I was like, I'm flabbergasted. I'm like, guys, what just happened? And the guy looks at me and he goes, is he serious? And I go, um... I would just pack your stuff up. (laughs) So the guy packs up, he walks out and it's pouring down rain, Tim. I mean, it's fucking thunderstorming. And a couple minutes later, I look out the window and that poor bastard standing outside by the bus stop waiting for the fucking bus. Oh, no. (laughs) And I go, dad get over here. I said, and he walks over and he looks out the window. I go, look at that poor bastard. You kicked him out. He's standing out there. The fucking rain is pouring down. Dad looks out the window, has just a tiny, tiny bit of sympathy and goes, fuck that guy. And turns around and walks away. (laughs) Uh, So safe to say that Melvin was, was not of the, the customer is always right school of, oh, of customer service. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, unless the guy was going to buy something, then, you know, he'd do whatever the fuck he needed to do to sell it. But he also did <laughs> not, he didn't take any shit from anybody either. I mean, he, I can't tell you how many times he kicked somebody out of the store because they just, my dad was a smoker, sure. number one, and the entire store sm- smelled of smoke. Sure. And my dad had kind of a temper. And I'll never forget <laughs> I'll never forget some lady walked in and instantly made a comment that it smelled like cigarette smoke in there. And from across the room he said, Well, if you don't fucking like it, you can get the fuck out of here. And I was like, I can't imagine why nobody wants to buy anything from you. Oh, Jesus, you're such an asshole. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a it's a good thing that he had you out there on the floor. I got accused one time of having the worst customer service, the worst disposition ever. I can't even remember what the situation was, but there was a guy that was just really rude and I wasn't taking his shit. And he asked to talk to the owner and my dad walked out and the guy says, that guy right there needs some fucking customer service and some attitude adjustment. And dad goes, no fucking shit. I've been trying to tell him for 23 years. (laughs) Uh, well, glad I'm, I'm glad to know Melvin had your back on that one. Oh yeah, no, he was. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call that having my back. 
Oh, that's funny. Yeah. He, uh, man, just times at the store with him, you never knew if it was uh, days where he was, he would lose his temper or, you know, be the funniest day ever. I mean, it was just <laughs> that he needed to be on Prozac. There's no doubt in my mind. So, so how did your mom put up with all of this? She, she didn't. Like, she didn't. said she's no nonsense. She's, she didn't because she, <laughs> she, he was with me every day. <laughs> After we closed the store, she called me. I don't know. Well, <laughs> here's, here's a perfect example of my mom and dad. Right. So before dad opened the store, um, he used to sell stuff out of his garage. He would have like a weekly garage sale and people would come all the time. Cause he always had different stuff. Like he might have tennis shoes. He had a contract with a trucking company in town that like they would do shipping and, and, and so on. And then there would always be overages or whatever. And they'd have to notify the company of these overages of these goods or, or whatever. And if the company didn't respond within 30 days then the trucking company was legally allowed to sell this stuff. So one week dad might get, Reebok shoes he might get you know or whatever so um dad would always have a um and he he had a line on on candy and things like that that he'd buy at wholesale costs and anyways dad was making pretty good money and I remember coming home and you know when you walk in the house and you already know your parents have been fucking arguing you can just feel the, <laughs> you can just feel the tension in the house right so I walk in and instantly, and I'm, I don't know, I was like 21 years old. And instantly I was like a five-year-old in, in the house. I instantly want to go crawl <laughs> in my room. And pretty soon I hear dad go, well, I don't give a flying fuck what you say. I'm going to do this and whatever else. And they're going back and forth and going back and forth. Pretty soon I hear, I hear my dad say, well, if you don't fucking like it, you can just fucking, we can get a divorce. And mom said, listen. If you think I'm fucking leaving now when we got all this money and I stuck around when your dirt ass was poor, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, you think I'm fucking leaving now? And pretty soon that was the end of that argument. They started, dad started laughing and then that was the end of the argument. But uh, I don't know. One time she bought, he bought her. This is my dad. This is so great. He bought her. Well, A, we never had the same. We can't watch family movies right now we can't watch family home movies mm -hmm. because every year we had a different camcorder with a different type of tape because sure. dad would get a set of camcorders and then sell them and he'd give mom one and then he'd have that ad in the paper and then he'd sell out and then he might get a call two or three days later and hey do you have any more of those camcorders and he'd be like well yeah i got one left and he'd sell moms <laughs> And then he'd be like, well, the next time we get a load of camcorders, I'll just get you a new one. And of course, the new one wasn't the same style or didn't have the same adapter. I mean, we had different tapes for different adapters for like three years. I yeah. think my mom might have had 20 different camcorders in, in three years. <laughs> we can't we can't watch any of those movies now because, you know, but the worst was. Mom had always wanted a brand new car. I don't know how they I, don't, I honestly, Tim, I have no idea how they stayed married. Mm -hmm. I, I don't because she should have killed him. <laughs> she bought he bought her a brand new Chevy Blazer, uh, like a 1995 Chevy Blazer for her birthday. And um, she drove it all the time. She drove it to garage sales and she, you know, she just loved it. It was her yeah. first brand new car she ever had. And dad was driving a uh, a Cadillac, which he always loved. And <laughs> One day he um, decided he drove by Bob Brown Chevrolet and saw this conversion van, like the you know the old vans that had the the couches and the seats in it. And, you oh know, yeah, and I, I yeah I right you know I still it. want one of those to this day. Right. <laughs> um, so he went home and took Mom's blazer and traded it in oh. on this conversion van, <laughs> and without without her knowing. Yeah, and she he came home in this fucking conversion van and the and the the uh cadillac was still sitting in the driveway and dad's like i traded the blazer in for this 
And mom's like, why the fuck do you think I would want to drive that fucking, you know, gigantic thing? And he yeah. said, well, I didn't think you would. I figured you'd drive the Cadillac. And mom was like, I'm not driving that fucking thing either. But they kept it. That's the way that that's the way it was. I was going to say, I knew a guy who, who did something very similar with his wife and he is no longer married to her right now. So. I told that I told Stacy, I said, could you imagine me just showing up at home one time and just being in a brand new car and not telling you, and I traded your fucking car in like, there's no way it's, it's a, it's enough of a problem to go buy a new car without consulting your spouse. It's a, it's a whole other level of <laughs> just danger. Take the car to I just bought you for your turn. birthday for that she, that he bought for her birthday. Yeah, that's, that's, um, uh, <laughs> Your dad was was either ballsy or stupid or, or didn't care or maybe a little bit of all of them. Or <laughs> I, well, <laughs> here's what's crazy about the the conversion van is <clears throat> he bought that from Bob Brown Chevrolet, and I don't know when did when did you live in Central Iowa? How long ago was it? Uh, I moved away in 2003. Okay, so yeah. you're familiar with downtown used to have a lot of car dealerships and so on yeah. and bob brown used to be downtown um and they had a big tall building that they were in over on ingersoll yeah yeah well so this conversion van had what they called this this special package that was called the gladiator package in it and it, <laughs> it had i don't but it was all the customization the like yeah. the leather seats and the electric chairs and whatever anyways the driver's seat the functionality of the driver's seat kept had broken a couple times and he took it back under warranty and they would fix it and then he'd have it for a couple months and it would break again so about the third time he took it back and they said you know there's nothing else we can do we can't fix it and dad said but it's under warranty you you need to fix it and bob brown would refuse to fix it sure so so dad proceeded to go home and went to the to the hardware store and bought a bunch of cardboard paper and markers and wrote Bob Brown Chevrolet fucked me on this van purchase and Bob Brown sold me a lemon and pasted it all over the van <laughs> and then drove back down <laughs> Hold on. and drove back down and parked it right in front of Bob Brown Chevrolet's dealership. Because at the time, it wasn't like the dealerships you see now where they're all spread out. It was one single building. Yeah. And they had a sidewalk and parking, you know. Yeah. And he parked right fucking in front of there and sat there the entire day. And customers were walking by and, <laughs> and they'd ask him and dad would tell him the story. So um, about halfway through that first day, they called the cops on dad. Sure. And the cops came and dad explained to him the situation. And the cops said, well. You know, you can't sit here all day. It is a three hour time limit on the parking here. And dad said, okay, well, what happens if I leave and just go around the corner and pull right back here? And the cop goes, you're, that's well within the law. <laughs> so sure enough, dad pulled out and pulled back around and parked there. And then when three hours came up, he called me on his cell phone. He had one of those brick cell phones. Yep. He said, hey, run down here to Bob Brown. I'm going to pull out of this spot. I want you to pull in right behind me, and then I'll pull in, and then you pull out, and I'll pull right back in again. That way you can <laughs> – so he did this for the first day. The next day, he goes down there. He sits there. He pulls out. They pull another car in. So now he can't park there. Well, he parks around the street, and he waits there for three hours. Three hours hits, he calls the cops. That same cop came down. You need to move your car. Told the dealership you need to move the car. They moved the car. Dad pulled in there. Did the whole fucking thing again. Right? I mean, the, so, I mean. There's stubborn right. and then there's your dad. That's a right. Yeah, I mean, he, they, they are going to fix this van. They're either going to fix this van or they're going to get some serious bad publicity. Yeah. Third day, we're three days in. The dude's not coming to the store. I'm running the store at this point. He's not coming to the store. He, that's his. He's like, I ain't got nothing else to fucking do. I'll sit here. All, I'll sit here for a fucking week. <laughs> he he goes up there in the morning. 
and I don't know if you've ever been at that place, but the sidewalk was very deep from the, well, they pulled all their new cars right on the sidewalk to block it from the showroom so that when people would be in the showroom, they'd only see those cars on the sidewalk. They wouldn't see dad's van. <laughs> so dad pulls in there, looks at those cars on the sidewalk and thinks, huh, calls the cops, same cop <laughs> shows up. Dad says, I just want to ask a question. It's illegal to park on a sidewalk, right? And the cop says, sure enough, it is. And whipped out his ticket and wrote a ticket for every one of those fucking cars. Because <laughs> I think at this point, the cop was just enamored with dad and was like, you know, this is some good shit, right? Right. right. I mean, it's it's entertaining. You, you got to root for him. I mean, he got. He they got finally screwed. they finally caved and flew and, and somebody from the Gladiator Company like flew in to fix the van. But I, I wish I could find the photos of this van plastered with signs that just said, oh. Bob Brown sold me a lemon. Bob Brown sold me this piece of shit. I mean, it was it was insane. Oh. For three days, he sat down there. That's crazy. I, that's, I mean, I want to... I want to make a short film just with this as the plot. Like I, you can't even make, know, make right? that's just amazing. You can't, you can't make that stuff up. Oh man, that is fantastic. But that was just, that was just him. Like he didn't take any kind of shit or whatever. And he would, he would then have fun with it. <laughs> he, he had a neighbor once that dad had lost his job and, um, bill collectors were calling this was when bill collectors would actually call your home and try to collect your bill you know oh sure and somehow they gotten the phone number to my dad's neighbor who was his best friend and called and wanted to know if melvin was working if he was just stiffing him on the bill (laughs) and uh so larry came over and was telling dad and dad picked up the phone and called that bill collector and proceeded to call that bill collector every hour on the hour for two days just to let him know, hey, just want you to know I still haven't found a job. And finally, the guy's like, you can't fucking be cop- calling me every day. And dad's like, but you were calling all my friends and wanting to know if I was working. You were that concerned about it. I just wanted to keep you abreast of my situation. <laughs> I was like, dad, if you put that much energy into trolling people as you would maybe looking for a job, you wouldn't be in that position right now. Yeah, uh, no, that's that's true. Um, well, you know, he was he was using his asshole skills for good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. What's that? Li- what's that line from Die Hard, uh, the second one? I thought you were an asshole. I oh, I am. I'm just your kind of asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Um, oh man, I w- I I hope. Someday maybe you could find pictures of that van. That thing that is just I, I would venture to guess my sister probably has one. Who's a new listener, by the way? Oh she subscribed the other day. Oh wonderful. wonderful. I haven't uh, I haven't alienated her yet, so that's good. Y- yet. Uh, right. <laughs> no, uh well fantastic. Well well welcome um to all our new listeners. I uh, expect more Melvin stories in the future, but I boy, those are gonna be hard to top. Chris, uh, I would I would pay money to just sit there and watch you, you know, somebody sit outside of a, a dealership uh, like that. Especially, I think what makes it all the better to me is that it's it's a conversion van too. Um, there's <laughs> yeah. just something about a conversion van that just adds to the comedy of all of that, right? Um, yeah, I I, I I want a conversion van. I want to turn it into a little camper, do a little, you know van life sometime when i when i finally have my mental breakdown and, and go out into the middle of the woods but um well no that is fantastic um boy uh, anything else you wanted to add here chris that that was kind of a, a good high no, note we've we've cleaned the closet out tonight I think. yeah absolutely well, uh, once again, guys, you've wasted another hour listening to Chris and I talk on old man strength. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at strength underscore old. Chris, I get it wrong 50% of the time, so I'll let you just say what your Twitter handle is. Cygrad, Cydad. Cygrad, Cydad. I am Tim Johnson, MN. Please also follow the Tailgate Society at Tailgate Society on Twitter. 
once again, the tailgatesociety.com is home to all of this content and more. So please go ahead and check us out. Please download, like, rate, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Uh, anything else you want to add, Chris? No, I think we're good. Well, fantastic. We will see you guys next time. I don't want to get on the bandwagon. I'll burn that wagon down and join the band. Traveling troubadours, terrorizing street corners just to try to get some supper in our hands. Now I waited all my life to get this off my chest screen, buddy murder until someone understands that it ain't about the money, the drugs, or the women. I make this noise just because I can. And we'll all join in to that original scene.